gang, the Lawnmower Detective here, and look what just showed up. It's a surprise. Well, not to me, but it will be to you. This is the largest package I have ever received here at the shop. Now, in reference, there is a full-size lawn tractor, and this box is bigger than that. So, if you all want to hang with me and see just what's in the box y'all stay tuned okay how about we take a little peek huh? can you see in there huh? can you see in there oh that's enough psych <laughs> let me just say this this thing has been a long time coming All right, gang, just a little bit about the history of this. Uh, if you've watched my video about the Franken trailer, you will understand my plight. This is, however beautiful this is, this is an ongoing issue year after year after year. And the Franken trailer has since died and been disassembled. So. Got the colors flying out there today. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. But anyway, this year, the pine trees right there have taken it upon themselves to drop the majority of their needles on the ground, so I've got that to deal with as well. And all of this beautifulness up here will soon be down here. So, and I've got uh, two acres of this. This is just one tiny little corner of the property behind me to the left of me to the right of me it's all it's all just leaves man they're everywhere that tree right there is about three quarters of the way done thank god but like i said this is just about only about a third of it so hence the reason for this machine lovely burning bush stay tuned Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the cover. I don't know if you can read that or not, but I have bought myself a DR yard vacuum, and here it is hiding down in there. There's the hose, the discharge chute, there's the uh, the engine and the impeller in there. I got it bolt down pretty good. So, and there's the trailer itself. The wheels are hiding down in there. Now, the other things that I ordered with it, the um, deck adapter and the extra hose uh, must be coming in a different shipment. So, we'll uh, work on getting this put together and I'll bring you back. As soon as I get all this out of the box and start putting it together, I'll uh, I'll bring it back. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody. I'm gonna start cutting some of these uh, wire ties here. Think about all this. That'd probably be better. Sorry for that uh, Bruce Pender shot. <laughs> this model here is the uh, Pilot 200. You can go to uh, DR's website and uh, order it right from them. That's what I did. Cut out the middle man. The truck driver showed up a while ago and uh, gave me a call and everything. I thought that was really nice. Instead of just letting me 
Wait and wait and wait. He called me. The actual driver did. Which I thought was exceptional. It don't happen much these days. So, but I'll put a still photo in there about, uh, I'll show you the rig I used to uh, drag this off the back of his truck. He had a lift gate, but I backed my truck up with the tailgate down and a winch and everything in the back, which you'll see in that still photo. And uh, it worked out great. Now we've also got some uh, pre-operation things to do to this, the engine. That's their, uh, oh, 200 and something CC and 220, I can't remember what it is. I'll get the paperwork for you. It's an overhead valve engine. Uh, I don't know who the manufacturer is, but it, uh, it says it's manufactured by DR Power Equipment, but I don't, I don't think so. But we'll have to see. It kind of looks like a Honda clone to me. All right, well, let me uh, finish getting the rest of this junk unpacked, and I'll bring y'all back. Well, I guess that's one phone call I don't have to make. Okay, everybody. So the first step is to install these axle brackets to the frame with 9 16 bolts and 9 16 inch lock washers. Do that on both sides. Be right back. Okay. The next thing is to put this one inch axle through the axle brackets and put the wheels on. I'll bring you back when I got that done. Okay, everybody. So for my next trick, the directions indicate that I need to attach that to that with those and two pins actually. Here are the two pins, and these are the retainer clips, right there. So, those are three quarter inch bolts down there, so I've got the uh, three quarter inch wrench and the uh, impact. So let me put all this together, and I'll bring you back. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody. Take it from me. When you're trying to put these two pieces together, if you don't have a helper, just use a clamp like I did right there. Long enough for you to get those uh, clevis pins in there. It worked wonders. Okay, I got those pins in there. Got those three quarter inch bolts in there. One in the front and one in the back. Now for the next step. Next step is to add the discharge chute on top of the unit itself. Now, there are some captive nuts here that have been welded on. Well, those don't look like captive nuts at all. Those just look like a little plate. But anyway, let me get this put on with four half inch bolts and I'll bring you back. Just going to ease those in there with the impact on those lock walls. Don't take much. You got to be careful doing that. There you go. Voila. So now that's on there. Sorry for that noise alert. Well, according to the directions, this is how the collector, this canvas collector goes on. I'm sure it's going to be like wrestling a octopus so uh one step at a time i've still got these brackets and these bars and these bars down here and the directions aren't real clear so 
let me uh, fight this thing and I'll <laughs> tell you who wins, me or the octopus. Stay tuned. Now the two front corners of the fabric, now that I've got those rods pushed through those holes, that was a little trying. But anyway, I got them in there. Now each one of these front corners gets a, uh, a corner bracket like this okay that sticks out enough down there so I can go in that hole and then those two holes on the side which are in here the corresponding holes have th uh, threaded thumb screws so you could undo that and take this whole thing off so let me get these on here and, and we'll move to the back there's one on the other side over there too so it's redundant so just let me get this on I'll be right back all right so I just zapped those on there with the uh, NASCAR gun bloop, bloop, and uh, I'm gonna go do the other side now I got this other side on over here and those are half inch bolts with uh, half inch lock washers by the way so there we have that I'm gonna get these on here and uh, Move to the back. Alrighty. Got those brackets on. Got them secured to the bottom. They have thumb screws here so you could take this whole top part off. And this trailer here can be used as a 400 pound capacity uh, trailer in itself. So, got the back ones on both sides. So, now we're going to be working on the top part. So stay tuned. All right, gang. So whenever you're using these types of uh, shoulder bolts here, you can see that shoulder carriage bolt kind of thing. Make sure you make sure you install it like so. You don't want to have it this way. It's just like a uh, lawnmower handlebar. You want to make sure that it's round this way and not the other way okay just a little tip for you and of course these come with the uh, thumb screw and the reason this has the, all these thumb screws on it is because the premise half of the premise oh, it jumped on me let me get that back in the right way all right so half of the premise of this thing is that you can come in here and take off what they call the collector this canvas part here you could take that off and just use this as a utility trailer which you know of course this thing here will collapse up against the wall it's supposed to be only six inches deep so good for storage but if you're short on space that's a great deal but if you don't you know, if you've got plenty of space, then just leave it like it is. Be back in a little bit. All right, gang. We're getting down to the final stages. I got all the Velcro done all the way around. And now we're working on the back doors back here. And it takes one of these fiberglass battens that goes in there. And there's one on each door. And there's one on the bottom flap. So that's pretty good storage in there. Let's see if I can turn the light on. It's not too bad in there. Over 200 gallons of finely mulched leaves. So let me get these in here. And I got a text a while ago saying that the uh, other portions that I also ordered the deck adapter and the other hose and stuff it's supposed to be here this afternoon i don't know why they did it that way but nonetheless i'll get back at it stay tuned all right gang i'm here to save you some trouble if you're putting these battens in this end is closed and the other end has this flap here all right so the batten has to go under this flap and then you have to bend it back this way and get under it and 
push it that direction. So, just so you know. Don't say I never did you any favors. Alright everybody. There is the assembled unit. Let me go fix this support rod here. This rod here supports the uh, suction hose with a bungee that's provided. Let me just keep it over here out of the way. I haven't done anything to the engine yet. Got to go through the whole preliminary thing with that. So, and there it is. Oh, wait, almost forgot. Now it's complete. So let me give you a little walk around here. The back has a series of snaps. And here is the vent to let the air through. We'll go around the other side. Get a good idea. Like I said, it's over 200 gallons. You can go to the DR website and order yours directly from them like I did. They're having a sale up until well, the end of the month, I think. $500 off any unit, so I took advantage of that. And this unit wasn't expensive to begin with, to be honest with you. So, I'll put a link in the description if I remember to for their website, but it's easy to find. They are leaf back. So stay tuned. Now we're going to move on to the engine portion of it. First thing the directions say is to level it. And therefore, I have done just that. So according to that little tag there, we must add oil. And that we're going to do per the manufacturer's specifications and we'll double check it to make sure it's at the correct level then we'll put some uh, gas in it and see if we can't get her fired up so stand by all right folks there you have it the proper amount of oil is in it per the manufacturer's recommendations we are going to turn the power switch on for the Go switch. We are going to choke it. We're going to turn the fuel on. Right. No, no leak from the carburetor. All right. Got that about halfway. There we go. Pool, rock and roll. All right, everybody. And there you have it. The DR leaf vac assembly. As of right now, it is, uh, it's assembled as far as I can assemble it because I've got other parts coming. Uh, the, the deck adapter, and uh, that's a whole other process in itself. You have to cut a hole out for your specific mower and uh, the hoses, of course. And uh, whenever that stuff gets in and uh, We'll put it all together and uh, show you how to put that deck adapter on and uh, take it out for a test drive. And uh, hopefully it'll perform better than the uh, Franken trailer ever did. So this is really sturdy. So we shall see. 
Well, thank you all for being here. If you haven't subscribed as of yet, go ahead and do so. Hit that like button and that uh, notification bell. And if you want to share this out, please feel free to do so. And uh, leave some comments down there. I'd like to hear what uh, your opinions are of this. Or if you have one and you uh, want to give me some insight as to what might go wrong first, <laughs> I'd appreciate that. Uh, so until next time, you all take care of each other. And don't forget, it's donut time. It has been a pleasure having you all here. Please don't forget to give this video a like and please subscribe. Last but not least, click the notification bell so you will know when new videos are posted. Thanks to all of you for your support.